Five panellists, five topical issues, no holds barred. For me, it's not knowledge that's lacking. It's that greed, it's that mentality where you feel you deserve to take your own and take it infinitely and let everybody else just manage however they will manage. We're almost becoming hardwired to try and cheat. I would, you know, suggest that we begin to hold our leaders accountable. There was a time in this country when yes. things actually work. I don't think that any organization should be above the law. And I think one of the challenges we have in this country is about governance across the board. Well, well, what I'm saying is that it doesn't really affect us in Nigeria. That's I don't know what we can do if the system is already corrupted. We've been warned as a continent of the influx of the Chinese. If you don't repay your debt, they will just colonize you. Surely, uh, greed is a form of madness since it results in gathering far more that can be put to use. Greedy accumulation. Ever heard of the cement Amada before? If you have not, you should read about it. It was a 1974 scandal of monumental proportion in which Nigerian government officials ordered 20 million tons of cement to be delivered within 12 months. At the rate of 1.6 tons a month, the shipments were more than twice the unloading capacity of all Nigerian ports combined. It set the tone for a discussion on the greedy accumulation of useless wealth by Nigerians. About a decade ago, a bank CEO in Nigeria forfeited 104 properties to the government. Choice properties are choice locations in Lagos, Dubai, and America. I've been unable to wrap my head around why anybody needs the owner of four properties that are mostly locked up of what use are these properties. I'm sure you have seen the video of a property set to belong to the former chairman of a political party in Nigeria. It's not as if the owner will bring all the people from his village to come and live there. How many children does he have? Some of the children might be women who will get married and go live with their husbands. And maybe the sons don't even live in Nigeria. The owner of the property himself lives in Abuja. So, who are the real occupants of this edifice? As with similar ones, domestic servants and security men. The most recent one was another humongous property said to be on 48 plots of land, somewhere in one of the major cities in the southwest Nigeria. How many people are expected to live on this 48 plot property? Will all the children live there with the parents forever? So at the end of the day, it will be a house with two or three owner linked occupants, and the rest will be domestic servants and security men. There are beautiful, unoccupied houses in choice parts of Lagos and Abuja, and some of these have been unoccupied for years. We also have similar properties owned by Nigerians across the world. The owners live in Nigeria, and the properties are unoccupied in foreign lands for years. Typically, the people you see in these buildings are the security men. Some people have said that these real estates are used to store proceeds of ill-gotten wealth. Otherwise, which sane investor would develop or acquire properties and have them unoccupied for years? Julius Rosenwald, a Jew, was major shareholder and president of Sears Corporation in the US. He believed education was important to economic and social advancement, and that the blacks in the U.S. were not being educated. Black schools were inadequate and deplorable. He financed the building of 5,295 schools to enhance the education of the blacks in America. It wasn't even a black. My advocacy is that the Nigerian elite and political class, the wealthy, should start to rethink their approaches to how they deploy the wealth they acquire. There's no much benefit to our world in acquiring humongous real estate that are really likely useless and unoccupied in the midst of aversive needs all around us. Who does the house on 48 plots help? When we hear those world wealth rankings, the wealth of these people on the list is mostly tied up in the value of stock they hold in productive companies and assets. They are value creators, employers, wealth builders, 
and not mere owners of private empty real estate. We need to review our ways. Yes, certainly. We, we truly need to review our ways. And uh, certainly. in reviewing my ways also, um, in your advocacy, you left out the gaps. I will fill in the gaps. <laughs> Cecilia Ibru was the lady who's uh, uh, the CEO who was uh, about 194 properties were recovered from. Okay. Oshomole is the one with the mansion, the former uh, chairman of a political party he referred to with a mansion in Iyamo. <laughs> Ajumobi is the late um, mm -hmm. former governor of Oyo with, uh, of Oyo State, State who built a house plots. in a 48 plot. It is the same everywhere. I have, uh, recently, the current Minister for State for Petroleum, um, is, oh, uh, no. Siva, mm -hmm. you remember he had issues with EFCC, but the moment he joined uh, the party that does not sin, his 49 oh, yes, houses, sins were his, on, his sins were forgiven, yeah. his 49 houses were returned to him. And then you will now begin to wonder why was, what would somebody want to do with all of these many with houses? That some of them, houses. they won't forget that they own these houses. Oh, because these people don't think. All they think about is primitive acc accumulation. Just imagine the money spent in building those houses. If you go to your village or your local government and you decide to build, you know, renovate schools, you build houses for the vulnerable, like two-two bedroom, you know, like Kegbenedio used to do. Mm. In Singapore, you have more people than the number of houses. So at the end of the day, you won't have a situation where somebody will want to rent two bedroom for you, or if, if a small kitchen called a room, a self-contained for you in VI, for 700,000 or 500,000 because it's in VI, because there'll be enough. But when you continually, prim primitively acquire this wealth, yeah. and we refuse to name and shame yes, them, yes, yes, then they would continue. And then to, 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 they, they, to round up, yeah. like Ekene always says, let us look out for the right people to push them in there so that we will now begin to have you know, people, you know, the worst, best of us or the good of us ruling the best of us. Warren Buffett is one of the most wealthy, the, one of the wealthiest men in this world. He's still living in the same apartment, I hear, that he'd always lived in. The same thing with um, uh, Microsoft. Uh, so uh, what yeah. is this thing, this obsession with huge houses? Uh, Balaho said uh, domestic servants and security aides okay, end up it. living in them. No, I think they end up with birds, rodents and lizards yeah, exactly. at the end exactly. of the day. Exactly. You know, because it's just useless. Mm. As he, Balaho rightly said, the sun's... Probably are abroad. They'll yeah. never yes. come for such yeah. huge stuff. The girls or the ladies, they're going to get married and move on with their lives. So who exactly do you want to leave 48 plus of land for? I mean, I, I want to tag who it on Who do you to... want to... What, which of your children will inherit 49 buildings? I want to tag it on to Libra, Libra's so um, advocacy because he's talking about EFCC. But it's clear that the people who are looting, you can see it is all around us. That's why he can name Oshomole, Ajimobi. Yeah, so why is EFCC acting like they're looking for who is, who is looting? But like, for example, somewhere in Enugu, when I, we were looking and saying, oh, let's investigate maybe buying some land. We came across massive plots of land. So this is Obasanjo, that he owns this kind of massive plots of land all around states in Nigeria. And you still say, oh, well, at least he's doing something for the country. No, you shouldn't tolerate. It shouldn't be open knowledge that people have these plots of land that are ex and in, excess of, away. in it, excess of what they earn. And you don't hold people. them accountable. That's why the name and shame is important. Yeah. You know? uh, and I'm glad Libra's plugged in the ga gaps because it mustn't mm. be left gaping like yeah. that. We must be able to say. And so I'm thinking to myself, the only way you're going to dissuade people from being so... What's the word? It, it's gluttony, it's, it's really? obsessive, yes. it's, it's something very, yeah. it's a form of madness, really. It is. It's, it's to insane. name and shame them, to film these lands, yeah. title them, put them on social, the same social media they're trying to clamp us yes, on. Yes, yeah. you and, see? And, and have them answer to it, because we are asking, how come you have these plots of land? How come you're not putting it where it ought to be? Because the money belongs to us. There's no way. You, and that's the problem. That's why, that's the, really, uh, to land it here, because Ruki, I must hear you. Um, that's why they're not able to deploy the wealth properly, because it was ill-gotten wealth. If, you, yeah. if you're a sensible man that works hard for your money, you'll be careful how you spend it. Our society Rookie. must get to a point where we question it's, sudden it's, wealth. It's, it's, really, it's really not right. Rookie, please. It's Rookie. very, very interesting that what uh, Golan had to say, because it's not, it's not only politicians. I'm, I'm sure you heard of Posh Party yeah, recently, yeah, right. and all these um, fast cash people who, no one asked them, how did you get this wealth? How is it possible that you can afford this holding a, a government office or, you know, suddenly from, from rags to riches? Yeah. So society also is to blame because 
when you go and do a huge um, donation in the church and everyone prays for you and then no one asks you what's really going on. And why would any community sell such a huge plot of land to an individual that's not building a factory? I mean, the, the, <laughs> the um, kings on whoever landowners have that's to get true. wiser also. You know, what are you doing to improve the quality of your community? Where are the schools? Where are the roads? There's no electricity. There's no running water to even flush toilets or even drink. And so you use all this wasted money. And by the way, buildings don't maintain themselves. I have a house. You know what it costs to maintain a house annually. And you have several of these just littering the whole place. The ones, you know. So, I mean, the whole thing really makes me sick to my it stomach. Does, and uh... it's really a Nigerian thing because really all over the world, this is not like that. People have properties. It's true. It's an investment. You have short lets. You have long lets. It makes money for you, and you employ staff as a result of that. Not just build huge, you know, monstrosities. Just, you know, I mean, anyways, let me stop here. I know this is a time issue, but we are all on the same page. Yeah, so, so we need to hold them to account. We need to name and shame. I think that's the only way forward on this one. Well, Aho has pointed to a perverse mindset. After the break, I'm saying right action goes beyond a mindset. Keep watching. <laughs> 